a super cold day here in Wisconsin. You may hear some humming behind me because the farmers are out in the fields, they're getting some crops planted, and today we are actually planting up the rest of our seedlings for our spring garden. So I figured I'd share what varieties we're planting and how we're doing it, and uh, we'll go from there. Today we are focused on getting the spicy bush basil and lime basil planted up, along with some anise, the mini mint, which I think I'm gonna give just a little bit longer. It's been taking forever to germinate and it took forever for it to actually even get this size. And then we're gonna go ahead and plant up these marigolds right here. And marigolds can actually be directly seeded into the garden too, if you would prefer that. But I like to start off with a nice plant. And then we also have the sunball over here, the verbena banariensis. We also have multiple different varieties to plant up of the snapdragons as well. It's been really nice to have the potting bench. Now I don't have to plant on the floor or bring the table in and out. It doesn't take up like really any extra space. So it's been really nice. you can easily have trouble getting these out of the seedling tray. So what I like to use is like this little dipping skewer and I just go in on the side, push down and then push up and they pop right out. Another really cool thing is you can use a part of a regular wooden skewer. I just break it so that way the thickest point is here, not just like the really thin point at the end. And I turn the tray over and I just poke it from the bottom. And that way it pushes them out without having to pull up on the green here. And then you feel like some of the roots coming. You don't wanna do that because then you could pull out a beautiful healthy plant without roots. So if it's already bumped out, it's just an easy grab. Easy, smooth grab. Once I'm done using a seedling tray, I just dump out the remaining dirt. And then I go rinse it. And then I lay it out to dry and it's ready to use for next year. I've had a lot of people ask about this red hose end and where I got it. I'll put the link for this hose end in the description of this video. We absolutely love it and we use it daily. Right now I'm planting the anise and oh my gosh you guys it smells so good. It smells almost like a black licorice. Not almost. It does. That's what it smells like and I just had to share that because I wish that there was a way to have it where I'm allowed to let you guys smell what I'm planting, but that's what I love most about planting our herbs this time of year is it just smells so good. And as these grow and you shake them around and work with them, they just smell up the whole greenhouse. And once they're outside, they do the same. One of the things that we love most about gardening is the smell that a lot of these different varieties can bring to a gardening space. So not only in the greenhouse right now, but once we transfer everything into the gardens, the best way to really accentuate the smell of herbs and other really good smelling plants is go out there and shake them up a little bit right before you're ready to relax and enjoy the gardens for the night because that way it'll really accentuate the smell into the air. And oh my goodness, you guys will enjoy your time outside with all the beautiful fragrant aromas coming from what you planted in the garden. That's what we love about gardening are the simple little pleasures that it brings to us. So it's really neat to see the difference between these snapdragons. These are snapdragons that we seeded in winter and these are snapdragons that we seeded only about I'd say two months ago and now they're just being transplanted for the spring garden. This variety here of snapdragons when we seeded them we just had the intention of growing them for flowers in the greenhouse and the sweet smell. 
And these are just growing in four pack containers, which are like a one by two inch cell. And they've been growing in here for quite a while, so these will still go out into our garden once it's time to plant. I always have a lot of people ask me if it's okay for their plants to stay in the smaller cell until the garden is ready, even though they already look like they're ready. And the answer to that is yes. So plants will surprise you at how long they will last in one size of a container. And not that all plants are like this one, but take a look at our eucalyptus here. I mean, it's ginormous. It's like taller than me. And it's been in this small little size pot since last May. So it's doing very well. Plants will surprise you, but you do have to give them extra nutrition through their fertilizer. And that's what keeps them rolling. Another question that I get a lot is when there's a double plant in one root ball, do I separate those? I even got that question in one of our newer videos, planting peas in the raised beds, where I showed how I placed two seeds per space. And someone asked when they come up, do you end up pulling one and just allowing one to grow? So the answer to all of this is no, I never separate any seedlings even with carrots. I know once they pop up, we're told to thin them out, but we do thin them out, but not until there's something on the end to eat. Even if it's the tiniest little baby carrot ever, we wait till there's something and we start pulling those carrots throughout the whole season. So we eat them from really tiny little babies to mid to medium to very large. Cause by the end of the season, they have room to grow. We just keep pulling them like you would, you know, if you were naturally, thinning them so still keep them evenly spaced as we thin them and it works out great and that's what we do with our flowers our vegetables everything and everything grows very well and it produces very well and it flowers very well so that's why we do it it cuts out one extra step of work and everything still performs just as well planting up all the varieties that I needed to plant up. Just recently I've been moving a lot of our older plants onto the shelves to kind of free up some more space in the greenhouse because we just transplanted up a lot of new seedlings for the spring gardens along with made a big haul from my parents garden center so there's a lot of new plants in here so what I've really gone through and done is I actually tossed a lot of old plants so we brought a lot of plants in last fall when the gardens were dying I was like hoarding them because I didn't want them to go anywhere I, I was so upset that the garden season was over so it was our first winter in the greenhouse and I just wanted to bring things in so I took cuttings we seed saved and we brought in some plants along with those plants came some bad bugs as well so there was some thrips some aphids some mealybugs and we're we've been kind of dealing with that I would say like all winter so some of these plants still have some mealy bugs. I feel like I got the aphids and thrips under control by using Monterey spray. It's for organic gardening and you just have to be more, you know, um, on the ball with it. So every four to seven days I've been doing a treatment when I see a big outbreak. Otherwise I'll do it once every 14 days. But for right now, what I'm doing is I'm going through some of our older plants. So we mainly just kept the ones that are on this shelf and the shelves over there that look the nicest. Any that were kind of spindly and kind of just looking like eh or had a big infestation of mealybugs because they are the worst and the hardest for, for me to get rid of. Uh, but we have been keeping them under control. So some of these plants right here right now I'm kind of going through and I am seeing some mealybugs. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and spray them down with my little mixture of Monterey water in a little soap and uh, go ahead give them a good treatment put them back and hope that we've got a lot of that under control now that we've got all of that batch of bad plants out of the greenhouse that little white fuzzy thing there that's mealybugs so they have more of like a wax coating it almost looks like cotton but that's what protects them from anything you spray on your plants that's why they're super hard to get rid of so whenever I spray them I make sure the spray really hits them and almost moves them so it hits their underbody so this right here isn't just one mealy bug this right here is a little nest of them so it's more filled with eggs so right here I already have my mixture mixed up 
Like I said, I used the Monterey mixed with a little bit of soap and we shake it up, mix it with just water. And what you want to do is I go through first and I kind of tip it upside down to get all the underneath foliage first. And you want to make sure you get it really dripping on there. You want to make sure it goes on the stems here as well. A lot of the mealybugs like to hide in between the stem and leaves. And then I just go ahead and spray the tops nice. So if I see an area that's a larger mealybug area, I actually spray it until I see it move. That's how I know I got all the way underneath and they aren't protected anymore. What I'm also going to want to do today is come in here and pinch this really nice size coleus. So as you can see, it's already nice and full and bushy. I've been pinching it since the time it was a baby. So all we do to pinch it is come up here to the middle of the coleus, as you can see. We're going to go ahead and you see this little middle part right there? Go ahead and take that right off. That stops it from growing up and it forces all the growth along the stem to bush out. So when you go in to pinch, it doesn't have to be just that little piece. If it's really high, you could go even lower. Like that. I'm going to come over here and do this one. grow up but it'll bush out at the same time so anytime you have anything that has even a few that grow out too long and you want it to be perfectly shaped you can always just go ahead and take a scissors too and shape your plant perfect like a bush so it continues to grow in that form You like that rose, Lana? Yeah. That rose is called At Last. Just be careful because there's thorns on the stems. Sure yeah. It just smells so good in here with everything. Yeah. So I got all of those treated up there and cleaned off so we can get that good. bench out of here now. Very nice. Yep. Mm-hmm. Isn't that huge? Shouldn't hurt too much. Stop playing with it. You, you want that? aloe too? Yeah. Okay. Where'd you take it? From this one? Lana, don't take it from the nice ones. Take it from the ones that are down here. Why? Or take it from one of these newbies here. Okay. There you go. There's your little aloe. <laughs> Buzzy, Buzzy, your grass is over there. This is my favorite grass. The Miscanthus Oktoberfest. Hers too, I guess. Yep. Can you put her by her grass? Over there. Oh my gosh, she's heavy. She is, isn't she? She's so cute, but she's heavy. There she is. There's your grass, Fuzz. So over in here, I have three and a half inch pots of different varieties so what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm also spraying them for thrips and then I'm also separating them out a little bit giving them each each plant just a little bit more room to grow because if they're going to be confined then some of the middle ones don't get as large when you give them space it kind of gets rid of some of those icky bad bugs it gets rid of little gnats from like you know the middle ones stay a little bit more wet this way they grow evenly and really nice big bushy and healthy and then they'll be ready to be put out into the spring garden so this is a new annual grass for us it's called lowlander so it doesn't get super tall I'm pretty sure it only gets about 24 inches at the most. Let's see. Ooh, little off. 24 to 36 inches. 
So for us, that's short because <laughs> we love the the um, purple majesty millet, which you know can get anywhere from three to four feet tall. Right. But this is our first year growing this variety, and I didn't know what to expect. So this is what I transplanted them into. But as you can see, they're already rooted in here. We still have a month. Usually I just let things grow and then move them outside. But I almost think these grasses would really, really benefit from being planted into a three and a half inch pot. And they should have maybe been just from the beginning like, like we did with the millet. With the millet, we don't even monkey around with the four packs because the four packs only carry one by two inch cells. And so we know that these already need this size to grow, but now we'll know for future that the lowlander grass can also be transplanted right into the three and a half, half inch pots right away, rather than these four packs. And the reason why we stick with smaller cells for a lot of our spring plantings is to really just conserve the space. And that way they take off super fast outside. If you notice, there's just like a little distressing happening on the leaves here and that that distressing is from thrips. I'm trying to spray downward on top of it so that way as it sprays the liquid runs down all of the leaves and down into the actual base of where the leaves come out because that's where the thrip likes to hide. Right there. I'm gonna put those there because that'll be the next thing I have to plant up. I thought it was all done, so I cleaned everything up pretty, you know, swept it off all nice, but I'm definitely not done, so. <laughs> it's gonna get good use. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Over. Here you go, Daddy. Honey, go sit down! Honey, go sit down! She wants to go ahead and go sleep. <laughs> Why not? Well, 